Good morning. It is November 24th, uh, the day after my market that you would have just seen uh, at the UFE Student Union Building. Uh, it was so good. Like, I went in with such low expectations. I was just basically thinking, it's a Thursday. What else would I be doing on a Thursday? I might as well just join. <laughs> Uh, it was their first time doing a market, and so obviously I had no idea what to expect, but honestly, it was just so good. Um, but anyways, you are seeing me in full grandma mode. I kind of get this way after my big markets, um, even though that one wasn't supposed to be that big, but it was just so full of people that I just, I didn't sit down for seven hours. <laughs> I'm in grandma mode like this after every market. Uh, I basically just don't leave my studio and I don't talk to anybody because I'm so socialed out, but like in a good way. But I want to show some things that I picked up at the market yesterday because I got some pretty cool things. First of all, my vendor neighbor, Bitsy B Jewelry, uh, who does really cool like fairy uh, butterfly jewelry. Uh, we did an art trade, so she got two of my prints and I got this little guy. It is a vintage frame that she filled with four different types of butterfly wings, uh, which you can hardly see right now, but I promise I'll overlay a clip of what it looks like. Uh, but I've been working really hard on my studio gallery wall and this will fit perfectly and I'm so excited. She also gave me these little lights for the tree that was on my table and now it's just gonna live on my studio desk for the rest of the season and I'm so excited about it. Also, I met Emerald City Vintage at the Vintage Bar Market, which you would have seen before my last market uh, in the beginning of November. And she collects, obviously, vintage things. I got um, this from her, which is like a vintage doll bust. I haven't sourced it yet. I want to figure out when and where it's from, but there's hardly any identifying features on her, but I will find it. Um, and I have another little doll, which I will put a clip in here, that I got from her. But I told her that I'm on the lookout for vintage dolls, and she met me at the market yesterday to deliver another one. Got this lovely doll. I'm really in, like, a vintage doll phase right now. Honestly, I don't think it's a phase. Uh, it's- <laughs> I think it's here to stay, but I've been making my own dolls out of air-dry clay, uh, and I'm so excited to have, like, an authentic, real vintage doll. Uh, that I can kind of study and see how it was made so that I can make more of my own. But now I'm going to do some inventory. I've got all of my leftover market stock in a giant Rubbermaid container right here. Uh, I've got to log that into my website so I can open my shop again. Really fun stuff over here. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another sketchbook tour. Uh, in this episode, it is my absolutely ugly sketchbook. Uh, this is a Strathmore, just regular drawing sketchbook, I believe. Um, not the wire-bound one, but the actual book-bound one. And it's, it's quite an interesting array of drawings I have to share with you. And even though it's quite ugly, uh, I, I think this one is very cool because it shows how my style develops from 2019 when I started until 
now, 2023, when I have my style quite developed. Uh, before we jump in, I think I will tell you a little bit about what's going on on the cover here. This was the first sketchbook that I actually started decorating with stickers, uh, which I really love to do now, decorating with stickers uh, of my own stickers and then also stickers from artists that I follow or meet at markets. Uh, this one, however, is just random stickers that I've picked up here and there. This is the only interesting one. This one is from an artist at a market that I did in, I think, 2021. <laughs> uh, so this artist came over to my booth and gave me like some of her stickers to do a sticker trade. So we traded some of our stickers and her handle is not on this sticker at all. So I never found her Instagram. So if you happen to recognize who did this, please let me know in the comments. These ones here are from Redbubble. I bought a bunch of Redbubble stickers back in 2020 uh, to decorate my water bottle. And I will never buy from Redbubble again, not only because like you're not actually supporting the artists really themselves, uh, but also because they're really garbage quality. So <laughs> these ones here are actually from one of my favorite bands from when I was in high school. Uh, they're called the Zolas and they're from Vancouver. And during 2020 to like boost people's morale, them and their record company, um, I think it's called Light Organ Records, <laughs> said that if you email the record company, they'll just mail you like five stickers of the band. So that's from them. <laughs> and I think that's all the stickers that I have on here. <laughs> it's basically just painting the picture for how ugly the sketchbook is going to be on the inside. <laughs> Let's get into it. So customarily, I leave the first page blank. I don't know why I do this, but I just, it feels a lot cleaner to me. I don't know. The first page I did was fresh in the summer of 2019. Uh, I did not have a style other than I had to do realism and I was interested in nature. So here are some graphite birds that I did. At the time, I was very, very proud of this. And this, I think is kind of the very beginning of my obsession with drawing birds. These are like, when I did these was when I first went public on my Instagram. So my Instagram looked like these first couple pages, you'll see. This is me getting more into botanical illustration. So I did another graphite drawing of Monk's Hood. Very cool flower. This is actually the lead singer of said band. Some more botanical related illustrations. I think at the time I was commissioned to do a moth piece for somebody. It was like one of my first big commissions because I was mailing it to Sweden. So I did a bunch of studies beforehand. Another of Zach Gray from again, the Zolas. <laughs> I actually haven't listened to them in so long. They just remind me of high school, which is probably why I can't listen to them. This I did, it was just a study of an old painting. I did it in a cafe with a friend back in 2019. I was really, really proud of how this turned out. Um, I had never drawn really in this style before. So now we get into my late 2019, early 2020 pieces, which is when I really focused on doing oil paintings. Uh, I followed an oil painting artist on Instagram and she was like so popular and when I was starting to want to begin my art career, I was like, oh, I should do oil paintings because that's popular online and I'm sure to make a career out of that. <laughs> so I started working on some series of oil paintings and uh, this is the sketches for those pieces. This one I actually did from real life. It was the first time I had ever done that, but this is a tree outside of my house on um, October 1st, 2020, uh, the harvest moon. And I sketched this from real life and ended up making a painting out of it, uh, which ended up selling, which was cool. This was also from real life. It was a huge stormy day and uh, I went outside and just graphite sketched the clouds that I saw, which ended up turning into this sketch here, which you can hardly see now because there's all of these clouds that have bled onto this page. So there was a sketch here uh, and this is the painting that it ended up being. This was a study for that painting that you just saw. Here we have another study for an oil painting. I had the thumbnail sketch right here, which is hardly visible. And then this is the sketch for the piece, again with graphite. I was really enjoying using graphite during these times. Again, another study. I was in such a pirate mood for this series of oil paintings.
another study for a piece in the same series, again with graphite. I was just basically sketching out tones and where I wanted things to be. Um, there's the figure of a tiger here. Uh, it ended up being this painting here. This was another study for that same pirate piece uh, that was before. Uh, I made another pirate piece, surprise, surprise. So I was playing with some concepts here, and then this was what I ended up going with. Uh, I was really studying a lot of old marine paintings, uh, so that's where a lot of these inspirations come from. I thought, you know, my career was going to be a marine painter. That's, at this point in my life, I fully believe that's what was going to happen. <laughs> So that series was done. I ended up actually getting into the news, which was quite cool, and um, all of those paintings sold. And that's, again, why I believed that that was my career path. Uh, so I started making my second series. So I was planning some titles and some concepts for different pieces. This is one piece that I did end up making, which you can see right here. And I'm quite proud of this one. I ended up keeping it for myself because I really, really like this one. I had like a whole story that I was trying to build with each of my paintings, but I think at the time I had like 200 followers, which for me was like a huge deal, but like nobody was catching on to my story. And so I ended up giving up quite quickly. I don't know if I can show this, but here's another concept for another painting in that series. Um, this is a sketch that I did just studying the human form. Again, more concepts for different pieces that I was going to create for the series. Uh, this was a self-portrait, and it says April 13th, 2021. I did this from a mirror, actually. I held up a mirror and drew as well. This was a study for this piece. Okay, so here's the interesting bit. Um, after doing all of those oil paintings, I haven't counted, but I think it's around 10 oil paintings. Um, I was getting quite sick of doing realism nature oil paintings. It just was not my thing. So I started to really heavily lean more into cartoon drawings, um, more specifically vintage children's book illustrations. So a lot of these are studies from Winnie the Pooh and uh, Mary Poppins. And just like, um, I have an old, Hans Christian Andersen illustrated book um, and I just basically opened it up to random pages and drew whatever I saw. Uh, here's more illustrations from Mary Poppins. Uh, the P.L. Travers Mary Poppins books illustrated by Mary Shepard are like my favorite books ever. So I just opened to whatever pages I wanted to and drew what I saw. This was a sketch I did of Julie Andrews from The Sound of Music. Um, really trying to figure out how to turn real people into the illustrated style that I had been sketching. And then I was feeling like, you know, why am I doing this? I'm not gonna, you know, make a career on Instagram out of doing illustrated drawings. So I went back into oil painting. So here's some more sketches for that. And here's another sketch for, I think this was actually my last oil painting that I did. It was huge. I think it was like four by five feet. Um, and... It is sold now, but in my recollection, I actually think it was really hideous. <laughs> uh, this is a study for one of my paintings as well. Uh, this was for a commission that fell through, but someone wanted me to illustrate one of their stories that had um, some... Honestly, I have no idea what animal this is. At the time, I did know, but now I can't even remember. <laughs> but um, I studied some of that. And then this was me trying to make it into more of a characterization, but the, like I said, the commission just kind of fell through. Uh, this page is blank. I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> this is me still trying to be realistic, but also still so in love with the vintage styles. Uh, so trying to find kind of a happy medium between that. You can see how far I was being pulled towards the vintage illustration style, but I was resisting it so hard. Okay, so this is November 2021, I believe. Uh, this was just after I did Inktober 2021, and I did basically all vintage illustrations for that Inktober, and that really made me fall in love with it and realize that I would love to do more of this. So I created a little November art challenge for myself, 
and uh, I mapped out kind of some different children's book pages for the story that I had made out of those prompts. So this was me studying, I guess, children for the character for my story because I had never drawn children ever before. Uh, I was very focused on plants and uh, realistic nature and all that stuff. So I was studying some old illustrations, some childhood photos of my brothers, and uh, just trying to figure out, again, how to turn real photos into a vintage illustration style. Studying another character that was in the story, I started off with this bear and then um, she eventually turned into the goat, but I think I want to do something with this bear later. I still love how she turned out. As you can see, me learning, the faces were very ugly. <laughs> so after that challenge, this was early December 2021, I decided to lean more into the animal heads with people bodies uh, because people online seem to really like that and I really enjoy drawing it myself. So these sketches here are uh, sketches for some original art bookmarks that I ended up making and selling on my website. This was me just sketching out what that would look like. This here is actually 2023. I think I did this like two weeks ago. I was kind of mapping out some ideas that I had. So this is just a brain dump page in whatever available space I could find. This was again for the November story. I just kind of jumped around quite a lot in my pages. So this was brainstorming for the last illustration. Uh, I wanted a circle of the little boy character that I had filled with animals all around him. So me practicing some animals dancing. <laughs> very, very hard to draw. <laughs> okay, so after that, I was super into making illustrated story pages. So I started brainstorming for another piece. Uh, this was an idea that just came to me uh, and I like jotted it down as quickly as I could and then kind of fleshed out the idea. She has nothing to do with it. This was just a warm-up sketch. <laughs> so this was, um, the next few pages are some commissioned pieces that I did. Um, back in 2021, I basically just took whatever commissions I could get my hands on because I was trying to make a career out of art and Obviously, to do that, you have to take commissions, so I took whatever I could. These are concept sketches, character sketches, um, studies. Uh, this has nothing to do with the commission. This was actually for this piece here. Just practicing poses and um, layout. Back to the commissions. This was the second piece I did for her. More of that. More of that. <laughs> more of that okay so now we're out of the commission zone i believe and uh this is my own personal project i decided to illustrate the original grim fairy tale of snow white and make it into a little book so this was me planning out each of the pages um what you don't see is i also had like a google docs with the text to make sure it would fit into all the pages um the first illustration that i did was actually the one of snow white's mother uh, and then that one kind of birthed the idea of doing a whole story. So these were some studies that I did for like the beginning Once Upon a Time segment, and then um, also the Evil Queen section. Just a lot of planning. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, we're not out of the commission zone. This is more commissions. I, this was like the last, I believe, commission that I did for her. And then this was back to Snow White. I was studying kind of how I wanted to do dwarves. If you look back at my old sketchbook tour, I think it's the last sketchbook tour that I posted on this channel. You'll find some kind of back and forth between this section of the sketchbook and then that sketchbook. I kind of bounced around between the two sketchbooks depending on if I wanted to just use pencil or uh, color. So these are more commissions, but um, exciting ones, actually. So um, this one was just like a set design thing that I was doing for somebody. Um, this one, however, is so exciting. So I did a board game back in, back in last November, so just a year ago. And um, this was me planning out the actual board game, um, some of the cards, and then the box title. 
so these are some sketches that I sent over to my client and then um, I had actual like nicer drawings obviously that I attached as well. This was just my brain dumping some ideas. Uh, that is actually out now. It's, I'm so excited about it and I'm so honored to be a part of it. Um, I'll make sure to link it in the description. This was just a concept sketch for a piece that I did last year as well. Nothing too exciting, it's just a fox with some Christmas toys. This was also 2022, December, um, planning the layout of another piece that I did. I feel like with the amount of effort that I put into it, I should have liked it a lot more, but I did not. <laughs> this one was January of 2023. Um, I was commissioned by Taproot Magazine uh, to do like an illustration for one of their stories that they were putting into their magazine. So um, I wrote down some of the descriptions that were in the story that they sent me. And then I sent some files to them of these images. So they kind of knew the direction I was going in, which is so funny. This is what I normally do with my clients just to kind of keep them in the loop. But the person who I was emailing with was like, these are so great, I'm so happy, but honestly, you don't have to keep updating us. We trust you. So <laughs> I guess I was annoying her with the amount of sketches I was sending. But anyways, I ended up creating this piece and uh, I'm so honored still that I was a part of this magazine. So after that one, I was asked by my friend Ty to do um, a piece for a gallery exhibition that he wanted to create. The prompt was Spawn, um, and I immediately thought of a frog at first. So I started sketching out some ideas of what I think I would have liked to draw. And then I did some studies of a frog and a fish from John Tenniel's illustrations for Alice in Wonderland. Uh, and then I also wrote the definition of Spawn you know, just for fun. <laughs> and then from these ideas, I ended up creating her, uh, which ended up creating this piece right here, which is what I made for the gallery. After that, uh, February, 2023, I made some Valentine's cards that people could download from my shop. So this was me brainstorming some funny little phrases that uh, weird Victorian Valentine's Day cards had, and then what I could draw on the cards. And I ended up coming up with these two, uh, which these are the sketches here for them. After that, I started brainstorming some other ideas. These pieces actually, I did end up making them. I never posted them because I did not like how they turned out, uh, but these were the concept sketches for them. And then after that, I made um, my Lady Earl Grey tea piece. And this was the brainstorming for that, as well as the drawing that I did before I jumped to the actual piece. During this time frame, I was trying to come up with pieces for my spring shop update. So this one ended up making the cut. This one I did work on. I actually spent like a crazy amount of time on it. Uh, and then I ended up hating it. It was in my shop for the spring shop update for like a month. And then I ended up taking it off because I just couldn't stand looking at it anymore. <laughs> I'm definitely learning that the more time I spend on a piece, the more I end up hating it, <laughs> which is interesting. These are some commissions that I did in April of 2023. So this was for somebody. I just did some concept sketches, um, layout sketches. They had to choose between the two of them and then some color studies for them. And then this was for somebody's pet portraits, so I was just practicing some outfits here. This was May and June of 2023. Uh, this was for my bird piece. So these are again some ideas that I made and then I practiced some poses and then I would have ended up making a piece from that. And then this is for a little story that I made, my little book that I have. Uh, this was me, <laughs> like, it's so interesting people looking at my sketchbook like this because these thumbnails are literally indecipherable but they make complete sense to me uh, which I think is so funny how artistic brains work um, but yeah these were me planning out the 12 different pages that I need for it and then trying to decide how the little girl would look. She ended up looking quite different than these girls but um, kind of you can see elements of these sketches in my final figure of her. So this was for my vulture piece. 
Um, I just, I kind of collect quotes that inspire me and then from there I create the piece. All of my pieces are made very heavily, well I guess I, sh I should say all of my pieces now are made heavily with emotions and what I'm feeling in the moment. So these are some quotes that I had heard or I had read or lyrics of a song or whatever that were reflecting what I was feeling in the moment and then the piece kind of comes out of that. So again, some very indecipherable sketches, but these are the ones that uh, help me plan out where everything's gonna go. Honestly, the messier the sketches are, the more clear my idea is. <laughs> so I started with this one. I knew I wanted like a border. Um, I was planning elements that I wanted in it and colors and such. And then I planned out kind of more detail what I wanted the piece to be. And then more detail of what I wanted the border to look like. Um, and then this was me practicing on a separate page, more so of how I wanted the ladies to look like on the border. And um, these were just some other ideas that I had started for another gallery exhibition that my friend made. Um, but I didn't end up making anything new for the gallery. I ended up just submitting this piece. Um, and now these ideas are just living in my brain to make for a future date. This was for my July Patreon reward. This is actually the back cover of my sketchbook, not an actual drawing page. <laughs> but I wanted to make an old Ex Libris book cover uh, for my Patreon rewards. So this was me kind of deciding on what I wanted to do. I ended up focusing on this one here and I ended up making this piece right here. And then as you saw, there was that other sketching page that I did like here, which is technically done after this one. And that's the last I drew in this book. So as you can see, it's terribly ugly, uh, full of many ideas, both used and unused. And um, I honestly think that an ugly sketchbook is so important for an artistic practice. And I've already bought my second one for my next set of ugly drawings. 